Thank you everyone for joining me today on how to not get stung by subscriptions by creating your own private cloud with vStation. My name is Jeremy and I'm from the Synology UK team and I joined Synology just over three years ago now. So I want to start off with a little story about my first day at Synology and it started off by unpacking a DS718 plus. I installed the drives, set up DSM, set up the storage pool and volume on it. And from there, it was all about installing all the different packages and apps that we have on the Synology NAS. <clears throat> so that was the likes of Synology Drive, Synology Photos, and some of the more businessy ones as well, like Active Backup and Surveillance Station. I'll admit it was a lot to learn and you know, um, there was such a vast array of things I hadn't even encountered before. But most notably, it was, you know, the different types of RAID 0, 1, 5, and 6, um, setting up a HTTPS secure connection, which I'd never done before, learning about how Quick Connect actually worked and keeps your data safe, and of course, creating a 3 2 1 backup strategy. By the end of it, I kind of felt like I started a career in IT management. Um, but it really showed me how rich the ecosystem that Synology is able to provide for our NAS products. And more importantly, how simple it was to set up all of these applications, whether it was just a simple file server or creating backups, setting up a private cloud, or even creating a whole surveillance system. So you can see that Synology systems have really evolved past simple data storage that NAS is typically known for, and it has quite some advanced capabilities now. Whilst that's great for most businesses, um, the typical consumer of one bay, two bay, or even four bay NASs, it can still be a bit daunting to set up and jump into the world of NAS. And it leaves people with a lot of questions. Some of the questions that we still get at trade shows and events that we host are the likes of what's the difference between the homes folder and the home folder? Um, what hard drive should I choose? Um, and of course, um, I didn't even know that you guys could do that, like the Photos app. So whilst that is um, quite a lot of challenges, we wanted to take a step back and see how we could really improve the user experience for this user base. So we're introducing BStation, a private cloud that anyone can set up and use within minutes. So BStation is really designed for someone who may be low on cloud storage and they're a bit undecided on whether they want to continue with their monthly subscriptions or look for an alternative out there like BStation. It could also be someone that just wants to start a simple backup of their files, folders and photos. Or it could be people who work with large files, which means that cloud storage fees become expensive very quickly. And of course, anyone who's concerned about the privacy of their data and want to know exactly where their files are stored. But really, is BStation as simple and convenient to use as the cloud? Let's take a closer look and let's start off with the hardware. So BStation comes in a four terabyte capacity. Around the back, you'll see a power button, two USB, C port, uh, so two USB ports, one of them being USB-C, a Ethernet port and a power port. It supports all the major platforms, so Windows, Mac OS, iOS and Android. And it comes with a three year warranty for the device. In terms of the setup, it is dead simple. In the box, you'll find a quick start guide and in there, there'll be a QR code which you can scan and it will take you to the B, uh, to the B station portal. From there, you will just sign into your Synology account um, using one that's existing or you can create one with Google or Apple ID. So we've just agreed to the terms and conditions and all we have to do now is plug it into power and the router and it will start up. On the first startup, it's uh, a bit slower, but you'll know it's already once you see the orange light come up. Once you see that orange light, it will ask you to hold the power button around the back for four seconds until you hear a beep. And once you've done that, it's completely set up and ready to go. So 
that was pretty much it for the setup. And all it will do now is some auto configurations and update itself if there is a new firmware as well. From there, we can name our B station. So we'll keep it as its default. And you can see here, we can start using the two main apps of B station, B files and B photos. So B files is a private cloud for your documents and B photos is an AI organized photo library. And I got the chance to try B station out early um, just before Christmas, before I went on my holiday to Italy. So with that in mind, let's take a look at how I was able to make use of those two apps in B station. Starting off with B files. You'll see that the familiar, uh, sorry, you'll see that it's a very familiar portal um, that you've seen with other cloud services. And one of the first things I wanted to do was collect all my documents in one place and have an easy way to share them if I did need to with my friends. So on the top left, you'll see the add button where we can choose to upload some files, but I'll start off by creating a nice folder to keep everything organized in one place. Another way that you can upload files rather than through that add button is you can go straight into um, the files on your computer and of course drag and drop them into the B station. So they weren't particularly big files, but they uploaded nice and quickly. And we can now start previewing the files. So I can just right click any one of these files and pr click preview. And we can see my booking confirmation for my flights. So um, that's particularly nice because it means I don't have to re-download the file onto my computer and then open it up. I can also preview Microsoft Office files like Word, uh, PowerPoint and Excel, but it actually has support for over 100 different file types. So you can see here a quick itinerary as well. I want to share this entire folder, so I'm going to click the drop down once again and enable a share link. And I can protect this link as well by setting a password or an expiry date for the link as well. I won't bother with that and I'll just click copy and now I can just share it with anyone and they can access those files. So I want to make some edits to that itinerary that I showed you and previewed on the B station web portal. And the best way to do so is to use the desktop app. So I already have the app installed. You'll see on the top right hand corner, there's a little icon for B station. If you're using Windows, it'll be on the bottom right hand corner. And I'm just going to sign in to my B station. So I'm going to use that same account that I set up my B station with and it knows it's already linked and it will it will sign up, sign in and ask us to create a cloud folder so that I can access all those files that I have on my B station. So once I click OK, everything is all set up in the background and it will load up with Finder with all my files. And you can see here there's a little cloud icon, meaning that these files are on demand, which means they're not downloaded or taking up space until I click that cloud icon. So I will download that itinerary and open it up and you'll see it opened up in Word straight away. And I can start making edits to this file as I normally would. So it seems like I'm going to do a little bit of shopping and I don't want to forget to bring some presents back for my family. So I'm just going to make a quick note of that in the itinerary. Cool. So now that I've made a note of that, I'm going to save the file and you'll see it syncs automatically straight back to B station. So going back into the B station web portal, we can preview that same file again. So in that same folder, we can go in and check that the edits have been uploaded into the B station. Great. Um, because I edited the file and created a new version, essentially, we can go in the version history and we can see all those edits that we've been making late, late at night. And I can go back to any one of these versions and download it or store it or even make a copy of it. So really great and handy for any edits and changes that you didn't mean to save. Now onto the B files mobile app that complements this all. 
we can go into it and we'll see those exact same files to how we left it off on the desktop and on the web and we can preview those files as well. What's also nice is we can start these files so I can find them very easily when I'm in when I'm in a pinch. As well as starting the file, I can also download them for offline access, which means that when I'm at the airport and I don't have signal, I can make sure that I can still have access to the PDF of my flight booking. Of course, we can see the same folder as well, and we can make an upload. So I forgot to upload my ski lift pass, so I'll put that in and it will upload directly from my phone into B station. Seems like I'm all set to go from here. So on the document side, it is all pretty much ready. One last thing before my trip, I wanted to make sure that I had all my photos on my camera roll backed up. So that's through the B Photos app, and it's dead simple to do once you have it installed. We can go into more and just simply enable photo backup. So I'm only gonna choose all the new photos that I take, but I can also choose to back up all the photos that are on my device, um, which will obviously take a little bit longer, but a nice option as well, if you haven't backed up your photos already. So during the trip, um, I managed to take some beautiful photos whilst I was out there, and it was a great time with my friends. Unfortunately, I had to come back from Italy, um, back to Milton Keynes, but I wanted to have a look through those photos and see all those photos that were backed up and uploaded. So some nice discovery features, including some AI categorized albums, which you can find under the albums section. So the first one is uh, the people's album. So that will automatically categorize um, faces that it finds. So you can see here a nice PC Pro ad, uh, sorry, PC Pro award we won. Um, in the subjects one, it will detect different types of scenes, pets, and also objects and food. So you can see a cute little cat here from my friend called Fries. And then finally, probably my favorite one, which isn't an AI one, but very cool, is um, a map view of all the different photos that you've taken that have geolocation data. So I can go back into Italy and scroll into Milan and tap in there and see that beautiful photo of a Christmas tree that I managed to take whilst I was out there. So I want to talk quickly just on those AI features. All of this is done on board with a neuroprocessing unit or MPU for short. And what that means is none of the data that we, um, none, of the, none of your data is sent to the cloud and all of the AI processing is done on device for maximum privacy. Having a dedicated unit also means that the other apps run smoothly and the AI tasks aren't affecting all the um, other apps that you're running on device. So moving back onto the B Photos app, I wanted to create an album and share them with my friends and family. So in the timeline view, I can press and hold to select a photo as you normally would. And I can also select um, entire days of photos as well, which is quite easy and handy. So I think I've just got about every single one of them there. And you'll see a little plus icon on the top right where I can create an album. Um, so I don't have an album existing, so I'm going to create a brand new one and add all those photos I just selected into there. And from there, I can see that giant share button and I can create that share link that I created for files before as well. So I'm going to enable the share link and I can password protect it or set an expiry date. Once again, I won't bother and I can share that with all my friends and family. What's also actually interesting is I can create a photo request link by the three dots on the top right. And that allows me to send this link to my friends and they can upload photos directly from their phone into my B station and into this album as well. So on their side, they'll um, put in this link and they'll be taken to a secure portal to upload those photos. It's very simple. You just select the photos from your phone. So whilst we were skiing, my friend captured this nice shot of the mountains and the ski slopes. 
So my friend Leo will just type in his name and tap upload, and it will start uploading straight to my B station. So we can go back onto that album in the B Photos app and give it a quick refresh. And when we scroll down, we'll see that photo that he uploaded. So it's all in my B station, which is handy, but also quite handy is all in this album as well. So everyone can can share this easily. On the web portal, you'll see a pretty familiar interface that I just showed you on the mobile app. And you'll see that there is the main timeline on the home screen that we can scroll through. But one feature that's not on the mobile app is this quick filters feature. And this allows you to change your timeline very quickly to easily find photos. So I can do it based on person or one of my favorite ones is one that's hidden away here where I can go into the different metadata so I can choose camera. Um, so for any of the hobbyist photographers like myself, um, you'll find that quite handy and quite nice to be able to filter on the particular camera you're shooting on. We can see all those same albums that we created on my on my uh, Beef Photos mobile app. Um, so the album we created and also the AI albums that we saw as well. So the ones for different people that it's recognized and we've labeled or the different subjects, objects and scenes. And then, of course, the places album as well. So that's quite nice, but one last thing is we created a bunch of links and if we go under sharing, we can see exactly what we shared externally to either friends or family. And we can also from here nicely audit all those links and make any edits or disable and delete any of the links that we don't want active anymore. So that was a quick overview of the two main features of BStation, B files and B photos. But BStation isn't just for yourself. You can share BStation with your family as well. It's pretty simple to do. We go into the system settings. You can invite a user by just entering their name and you can copy that link to um, link them with your BStation or you can send them an email. You can invite up to eight other users and these spaces are entirely separate from each other. So everyone gets the privacy they deserve for their files and photos. You might have some files on other cloud services or USB drives, and you might want to centralize them all in one place in BStation. So if you have files in Dropbox, Google Drive or OneDrive, you can sync them down from the cloud to either migrate these files completely off the cloud and put it onto BStation so you can cancel those subscriptions or you can set up a two-way sync and have those files accessible on both the cloud and BStation at the same time. If you have any photos on Google Photos or iCloud, you can also manually import all those photos into BStation. Both Apple and Google allow you to make a data request to download those photos from, from their services and their cloud. And from there, once you have the files, you simply just upload it to BStation using the desktop app. And finally, we can't forget to back up and protect your BStation. Whether that's against theft or natural disaster, we always recommend backing up your files and photos. So that could be to Synology's own C2 storage service, or you can use one of the USB ports on the back to back it up to an external USB drive. So that was BStation, a simple and easy to use private cloud designed for everyone. BStation is available for just over 200 pounds and you can buy it direct from Synology on our Synology store or one of our partner resellers. BStation joins the rest of our B-Series lineup along with B-Drive, your personal data keeper. So thank you very much everyone for joining us today and we hope you're ready to create your own private cloud and cancel those subscriptions.